My name is Mark Seeley. I'm Director of Autograph and um, also um, Professor of uh, Rights and Representation at University of Arts London. And also very proud to be associated with my colleagues at PMC. And this conversation really is a two, three year end game to trying to join some permanent conversations really about colonialism and climate change and the intersectionality between that. And it's not surprising really out of that that there's been so many great speakers here today, which we'll try and summarize a little bit later today. But this is just to remind everybody that this is very much a work in progress and that answers are really hard to find and questions are there to be had. And unless we ask those questions, then we won't get to those answers. And then when we get to those answers, there'll be more questions, I hope. So it's an ongoing learning game, which is part of the whole decolonization process. And maybe at the end of this, in generations to come, people will feel a little bit more settled with these difficult pasts, might feel a little bit more comfortable We've been able to kind of have conversations across race, place, space, and time. And histories may well be written in a place that we can identify with them and share a little bit more. And come to terms with the fact that actually, you know, humanity's got a lot of difficult aspects to it. Violence is part of that. Greed is part of that. And sharing seems to be more complex in an increasingly violent, greedy, capitalist society. So these are things that we're trying to work against. Part of those conversations means that I'm always drawn to artists that are trying to solve difficult questions, whether it's around race, space, sexuality, class, gender formations. Wilfred Ukpong is a French, Nigerian and inter interdisciplinary artist and researcher whose distinctive socially engaged practice utilizes several interwoven mediums, including photography, sculpture, and performance, to tackle pertinent social issues with community participation and intervention. Wilfred's driven by a profound desire to effect change in his homeland, southern Nigeria. Wilfred Ukpong's bodily, Wilfred Ukpong bodily, boldly explores the environmental and social issues of an embattled, of an embattled region, applying both fictional and I think importantly, futuristic lenses. It's the future that we really want to focus on as well. The Niger Delta is considered the mainstay of a Nigerian economy. In Wilfred's own words, community, history, ecology, cultural evolution, these mediations on my homeland demonstrate how art and filmmaking processes can be employed to challenge colonial narratives and disrupt systems of knowledge production. So without further ado, please welcome Wilfred Ogpund to share his practice with us. Thank you, Wilfred. Thank you very much indeed for coming and, and sharing in this space, you know, of knowledge production. And I think, I hope you guys are inspired as well as I am, you know, and it's a very very powerful, you know, um, uh, seminar that we are having. And um, I know that I'm, I'm pretty sure that you're going to leave here, you know, being empowered one way or the other and having a rethink or reconfiguration of how you see life and how you see your relationship with the wall we leave and how you reimagine, you know, a better sustainable future. So um, I'm, I'm just going to read... Um, something that I, I wrote. Um, then after my theme, my short uh, theme would be shown. I strongly believe that we all have a responsibility for the world we inhabit. In us, we possess the ability to dream of viable ways in which we can act as agents of change. Together, we can dream of building and shaping a sustainable economic and social system that is embedded in an inclusive framework capable of generating and maintaining the conditions of harmonious coexistence against the backdrop of these dreadful visions of dissonance that beholds our future world. So it is a time to start reimagining, start thinking about how we can live a better life and how we can reflect on our past um, and then look at ways that we can um, leave a very human, viable, um, sustainable um, 
future. So um, maybe we can start showing future world EXP. Step a little bit out, and then after we can continue in the conversation. I stand before you, not as an expert, but as a concerned citizen. One of the billion people who marched around the world to solve our climate crisis. I believe that mankind has looked at climate change as if it were a fiction. Pretending that climate change wasn't real, but I think we all know better than that now. Every week, we're seeing new and undeniable climate events, evidence that accelerated climate change is here now. Droughts are intensifying, our oceans are acidifying, with methane plumes rising up from the ocean floor. We are seeing extreme weather events at unprecedented rates, decades ahead of scientific projections. This is now about our industries and our governments around the world taking decisive, large-scale action. We need to put a price tag on carbon emissions eliminate government subsidies for oil, coal, and gas companies. We need to end the free ride that industrial polluters have been given in the name of a free market economy. The economy itself will die if our ecosystems collapse. This is not a partisan debate. It is a human one. Clean air, and a livable climate are inalienable human rights. And solving this crisis is not a question of politics. It is a question of our own survival. This is the most urgent of times and the most urgent of messages. The time to answer humankind's greatest challenge is now. Now must be our moment for action. For action.
Conversations today about participation, right? And reclaiming, and right? Yeah, re realigning and rethinking. Mm. And I think it's really, really important that we talk about the genealogy of a project like this mm. and what the intention out and what the intentionality for you and your colleagues behind it are mm. in that in, in in the making of this project. So we have to be very we try and skirt to the issues as quickly as we can. Yeah, I think I mean when you when you watch this film, you you think I see a Vidas. You know, it's a very nightmarish kind of linear joy, non-linear journey, if you will. You know, as if you've just woken up from a bad dream. Um, but it was just essentially telling, you know, um, the stories of, you know, um, my community. I come from an oil producing community and uh, also telling my own stories, like kind of autobiographical because, you know, my, my dad um, was the first, you know, local uh, to be a boss in ExxonMobil and um, he wanted his children to be engineers working for, you know, all companies. And uh, my senior brother went on to be a manager in Shell, and then my junior brother, you know, an engineer in mobile. So I studied science and as an engineering student. In my first year, I dropped out because I felt something was wrong. You know, I don't know if it was a calling or some, you know, kind of very strange force, if you will. And, um, you know, and I felt that, you know, my position you know, my privilege coming from that background, I understand, you know, the very dynamics and the, you know, cultural, uh, social, environmental issues, you know, going on in the Niger Delta, um, you know, and my family's involvement. So I thought it would be interesting to tell my own story and, and that, that very agitating, you know, process of, of, of uh, when you see, you know, uh, resurgencies and when you see, you know, a transformation and also rebirth you know, at the end. And, um, you know, I spoke about so many things, you know, the work exists in different layers, you know, of conversations. You would talk about, you know, you can, you can, you can talk about revitalization of culture. Um, um, you talk about uh, the idea of, um, of a, you know, animating uh, indigenous environmentalism, if you will. You see the rule of women, you know, in our community, you see that, you know, at the, the point where the old man, you know, was killed, you see the, you know, you see women all true, you know, because uh, the women um, in, in, in the Niger Delta, in my, in my, my tribe, it represents, you know, they represent life, you know, they, 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 they are the, you know, the source of life and energy. So, and that's why you see that. And this is really kind of, you know, um, counter what, you know, what people understand as feminism, you know, if you will, you know, in the, in the Western, you know, perspective. So where women are seen as, you know, um, they carry a lot of energy, they carry a lot of force. And, um, and I think I was reflecting that in the film also. And also, um, all the participants you see in the film are from non-art, you know, background. They don't have any artistic or acting experience or whatsoever. So, uh, you know, taking them through that process of creative workshops where they learn how to perform, how to develop costumes, how to create props that became sculptures, that art, artworks like sculptures that became props in the firm, and also negotiating with, you know, oil companies or fabrication, engineering fabrication, you know, um, companies that this work, this local, so to say, would come in there and perform. It was a very, you know, interesting level of, you know, dialogue that I, I was interested in. Um, so I, I think the work um, for me, has you know this very double ontological status. The fact that it is able to highlight, you know, they, you know, um, they, um, they, um, the extreme, the, the, the detriment of extreme extraction in the Niger Delta, and also uh, it exists as a tool 
um, for um, social empowerment. Um, because, you know, as I was talking with Mark this morning, it, it's about giving a sense of agency, if you will, to, to the local communities, to the young people. So um, in that process, you sort of awaken their consciousness, you know, to become embodied beings, you know, to feel, you know, their ancestors and their land, and also to become active agents of change in the making. Um, so that is why uh, this project was developed, and the film was shown in the Nigerian Senate um, to encourage environmental cleanup in the Niger Delta. And, um, you know, uh, maybe we should, yeah, talk a little bit about, um, we don't really have so much time, but, you know, I would briefly talk about the Vol Foundation, um, because I realized that, I mean, you can do all this, you can engage the youth, then what next? You know, what next, what happens? You need to create a kind of infrastructure, a kind of a, a space, an enabling environment where they they can be empowered more and more, and then. Um, but the film itself works as the first stage of understanding. Absolutely. Towards building a kind of creative license. Right. You can begin to articulate. Absolutely. That you need to be in the future. Right. Yeah. So the participate, as I understand it, the, mm -hmm. participatory, the participatory process mm. and the outcome. Mm. is a journey towards understanding that you can have mm. a degree of agency about writing the narratives and performing your futures mm. that you want to within the locale. Right. And, do, and using the centre, if you like, as a generative space mm. for experimenting how you articulate those ideas. Mm. I, yeah, I think so. And because at, at the end of the day, uh, from the very beginning, um, when I... When I was in the Niger Delta, I wasn't thinking about these forms. I wasn't thinking about, you know, how to... I, I, all I knew is that I just wanted to embody, you know, this, you know, the, the, the space, you know, and then, uh, you know, see what comes out from it, you know, maybe making cultural references, you know. Um, but I think, and then looking at who is interested who is not interested, you know, how do we tell our own story? How do we rewrite our own narrative, you know? And, and then that it, so that it has a sense of we are able to rewrite and we are able to speculate our own future, how our environment would, should be. So we also talk about this idea of regeneration or, or having a kind of generative future, you know, in the process, um, if you will. And then yeah. the movement towards... Because it does tie in with a lot of the conversations we've had yeah. about building something right. that becomes a radical alternative way of thinking through. Mm. Yeah. Um, just to be very quick. Um, so this is what the Vol Foundation is all about. It's, um, it's a newly established non-profit Nigerian-based international artistic residency space and creative academy under construction. Um, Envisioned as an artist-led creative and cultural center, the Vove would promote transdisciplinary art, cross-cultural dialogue, creative and, uh, development, social and environmental justice in the Niger Delta of um, Southern Nigeria and beyond. Um, I mean, you might wonder why this design, you know. Um, I, I wanted to subvert the, you know, the designs of what we see in the Niger Delta. And so I said, um, um, I drew reference from floating oil production system, FPSO, power turbines, ship uh, structures in the Niger Delta to create a seemingly futuristic vessel as a bold symbolic statement on West ecology and artistic. And um, so I have reposed and recycled material waste from oil and gas sector to create an eclectic geometric functional roof design for solar storage inverters, complementing the building stack minimalistic color palette that challenges conventional typography and that sustains the, the ability to unfold both industrially and artistically as a dynamic, eco-friendly, multifaceted creative space. Uh, the foundation mission is to mobilize a network of multiple agent actors, both local and international, in a nexus that drives social arts and creative entrepreneurship through projects that promote the intersection of artistic development, cultural dialogue, social justice, human rights, youth and women empowerment, 
environmental and ecological justice, and by extension, agricultural sustainability through scientific experiments in the foundation external mini so farm. No, yet. no lacking on ambition there, Wilfred, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, it's, 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 it's everything, you know, you know, whatever, whatever, how do you respond, you know? It's, it's um, I think, I think when you look at, you know, the social, cultural um, demands, the economic deficit, the alarming environmental emergencies of our time, I think, you know, this is the way to respond to it. You know, we have to respond. Ad making becomes responsive, just not just making, you know, just not making images, but you have to respond as well. And um, because these are days of many artistic commitment for change. And that's why we are here, you know. And um, um, there is something I, I, I wanted to talk about, you know, um, from the very beginning. I said, over the past 13 years, my work as an artist researcher has been focused on developing and exploring dist distinctive socially engaged methodologies and approach in which art can save as a catalyst or tool in, tran in social transformation from an interdisciplinary, cross-cultural, connective aesthetic and context-specific perspective. I'm interested in examining the broader relationship between lens-based practice and strategies of social change, decolonization, social justice, cultural revitalization, and most importantly, environmental and ecological activism. Pause, pause, pause. <laughs> yeah. I want to know what the impact is locally and globally for the film that you've made and the works that you've been making. What is the impact, both on the young people's lives and the way that the work has been received and the ambition here? Right. They, I mean, in the local context, I think I've, I've worked with more than 200 youth through different creative workshops in, in various marginalized oral communities. These, these are young people whose voice have been, whose voice and culture have been repressed, you know, over the years. And then giving them that, you know, uh, sense of agency through skills acquisitions, through um, unlocking that, you know, that, you know, that internal potentials, you know, to be creative and, uh, you know, social environmental agent. I think um, it has a lot of work within the local, con uh, it has a lot of um, significance without, within the local. I mean, I think it's important to press that this is frontline work. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, it's, it's something that we don't always like talking about because I think, you know, from, from the very beginning, I think I've given myself, you know, that's why in the walk it's very autobiographical because I think I died. You know, I died because the people ask, ask, keep on asking me, why do you live your life in Europe, you know, and spend time in the, in the local communities? You, you have a better life. You, you live in Oxford. You live in Paris. Why should you do this? I think, you know, they've been asking me the question, are you a social worker or artist? I said, well, I'm both. I'm everything. Uh, but I think it's actually fulfilling the essence of my existence. I couldn't do any other way, you know, than responding or being pulled. You know, there's also a historical, ancestral kind of sense of calling right. that you have within the work. Absolutely. Which I do think ties down to the idea of unpacking how indigenous knowledge is trying to transfer it into a creative process. Right. Do you want to share that a little bit? Um, a few minutes? Yeah. <laughs> ancestral knowledge in two minutes, things we do. I, I think my great-grandparents, you know, um, way... Uh, sort of herbalist, you know, on maybe shaman if you want to, within you know the context. And and I and I when I was born, I was given a name that sort of every time keeps on resonating. They said that's who you are, you know. And I think um, I don't know why it's very difficult for me to live the very comfort comfortable life that people live here in Europe, why do I need to spend time back in Nigeria and leave my family? I think, you know, um, and the idea of dreams, you know, you dream and then you feel things and then, and then you try to animate all that energy within this, this walk and the making of the walk, 
How do you embody all these spirits, you know, all these energies that flows in and out? And how do you choose people? How do you connect with people? So there's a sense of agency that something drives you, you know. And this is, this is a very interesting topic that I like, you know, um, because it's, it doesn't have any rationale, if you will, <laughs> you know, uh, behind it. You know, something pushes you and keeps on, you know, propelling you. And, and um, I was a science student. I just, you know, picked a book some way, Flash of the Spirit, about African art and philosophy by Robert Farris Thompson, you know. And it, it completely changed everything in me. And I was like, but, I mean, how come? And then I lost out from that beautiful life of, if you will, beautiful. Uh, because I think my father was never happy. But before he passed away, he said, you know what? I think you'll fulfill a dream that I had, but I, I, could, I couldn't, you know, you know, make it work. So you, you actually stood in the way um, and fulfilled that dream for me. Thank you, you know. And uh, maybe he wanted to change things, but he couldn't. Because it's a livelihood, you have to make good money, you have to send your children to school, you have to live, you know, um, a, a wonderful life, just like we do in Europe. But I think, um, I think, you know, that's that ancestral part that keeps on, you put, yeah, puts me there. And um, I hope I've been able to answer my questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's a work in progress. Really. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Um, uh, I'm just wondering whether we could have maybe if there's one or two burning questions and then we will close the session for today. Okay, I will go for it. Go for it. <laughs> right. Oh, so take that mic. Thank you very much for You're welcome. sharing your work with us. Um, there is a history of environmental activism in Nigeria in regards to the devastation mm. of the region you come from. And I'm thinking of Sarawiva being assassinated, for instance, right. and the campaigning that never ends. Mm. Has that influenced you? Has that impacted the way that you look at your role to communicate this this change that you you mentioned you you underwent at some point you realized you need to do something did that influence you in any way and and how is the river now i would like to know how much cleaning has happened or if any how much how many projects are in nigeria to remedy that devastation i would like to know more from the mouth of Thank the you. village man. <laughs> Thank you. I, um, I was in secondary school when Kensorua was executed. You know, I had this very deep artistic inclination. I used to read his poems. And, um, you know, I was, I, was, I was a fan. And when I realized the circumstances around his execution, I was deeply devastated. And um, I think, you know, this is just this key moment that you kept on asking yourself, is this really, you know, something is wrong here? And my dad, you know, everywhere was at peace until he became executive manager in ExxonMobil. There was never peace at home again. You know, so these are the things you ask yourself, you know, what, what are, there's something wrong here. And I think this really impacted me in a greater way. And I, I start thinking about how do we affect change? And... Um, but when I had the opportunity of having a grant from the Prince Klaus Foundation in, in Amsterdam, um, I went back to the Niger Delta after living in Europe. You know, I live in London, then moved, you know, to Paris and then came back to Oxford. Um, I, I realized that um, there's much to be done. I was looking at my community in a different lens and I went around and I see enormous devastation, environmental devastation. And then, you know, and it, it was overwhelming. You know, um, if you, if you, I mean, and this is something that I, you know, I would, I always like to highlight. I mean, when you see the exhibition, it, it looks stunning and compelling and, and beautiful. But, you know, there is this very dark part of it, you know, because the people who actually participated in making that work, their life is, you know, and what they've gone through. And young people losing their children, you know, somebody calls you, oh, I've given birth, and you're like, oh, wow, that's interesting. And then the next thing, my child has passed away, and because there is no good hospital. And even the floater, when you look at, you know, the kids on the floater, you know, the, the boy on the, you know, with the yellow ribbon, he wanted to be an artist, but he passed away 
because there is there was no there's no good hospital in their communities so there's a lot you know and and the work itself has to highlight this issue you know as a form of visual activism if you will when it's shown out of the niger delta nigerians don't don't are not the fan of this work you know um already they have demonized it you know because you know of the horns which actually reference you know a, a mask of fertility you know but you know but i think it's really important to to mention that there's a lot of ongoing environmental devastation in the Niger Delta and, and the need to be a cleanup process. Shell is leaving, ExxonMobil is leaving, and uh, Total as well. So, you know, so what, what is next? But the foundation, what it does is that it's going to... Do the, we go, I'm very mindful of time. Yeah. Quick summary on the foundation, right. and then we will have to, have to, have to wrap up. Right. Um, let me just move the image. Yeah. So um, I think this is really important because this is actually from the oil and gas. Um, is is a connecting um, floating system that takes crude oil from the rig to the vessel. And um, I, I saw this in the community, so I kind of sort of salvaged it, took it back to my um, studio, and then um, the cock here is, is used, the polyesterine is used in making the headrest, actually. So <laughs> I kind of repurpose everything. And then it's going to be used as, as this, this storage is going to be used as, um, um, as a solar s um, storage system. So this is the ongoing... Uh, construction. Um, I decided to, after Mozimo acquisition of, of the, the images, I decided to invest the proceeds into building this structure. And so that's, um, that's, um, that's a kind of space. I'm, I'm interested in building an en enabling environment where young people can be empowered, where we can disrupt systems of knowledge production, where, where we can you know, um, develop new ways of thinking, you know, and new ways of embodying, you know, our being. So that's what the, uh, the, the space is all about. So, um, so I mean, this, is, this, this whole process is about sharing conversation. There will be some drinks and stuff upstairs. The conversation will carry on and we'll carry on again tomorrow. So thank you all for coming today. I uh, hope you've taken a lot to sleep on and think through. And there'll be a lot more time for further Q&A tomorrow. And enjoy this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wilfred. Thank you. Thank you.